Welcome back everyone. We are into the FA Cup final, but after an embarrassing performance. You thought we were going to win the game, but we did in the end, but not the way that we wanted. It felt more like a loss. It's been a few days, I've managed to calm a bit down, I've started to recover from the flu that I've had. One of the reasons why I haven't been making videos, but I still managed to get a few previews out to you guys. But nevertheless, let's get into our next game, which is Sheffield United. Subscribe to the channel, drop a like, you know what to do. Thank you for the support. And I look at this game in two different ways. On the one hand, we've got nothing to lose. We simply just have to go out and win and try and get as much points as possible before the end of the season because Champions League is gone. And for me personally, I probably want to be completely out of Europe. I don't want us to be playing in the Conference League. And if we manage to make Europa League, I guess it's better than nothing. You know, it looks like another trophy to win next year, considering where we are right now as a club. But that FA Cup semi-final against Coventry, there were so many questions after that game. I was wondering and trying to figure out what exactly Ten Hag is thinking for this particular game against Sheffield United. Because we are playing at Old Trafford. But he cannot start the same players again. He can't have the likes of Rashford and McTominay starting in this game. Whether they are injured or not, he just cannot. Their performances do not mean that they should be starting. It's impossible. Yes, McTominay scored a goal to give us the opening lead in the game against Coventry. But other than that, for the rest of the game, he was completely missing. You know, you look at Ten Hag and the changes that he made, but you have to also realize that he took off two teenagers. And it's amazing how he crumbled after they came off. It's amazing how, even though he put on international footballers, players with experience at the top level, were unable to keep a clean sheet, first of all, and unable to keep Coventry City out. You know, I speak about cowardice behavior. I speak about players who don't have the mentality to play for Manchester United. And that game against Coventry exposed quite a few of them. <laughs> Rashford had a poor game. Let's be honest about it. He didn't have a game that you could look at and say, you know what, he was trying there. He even went off injured. And I put it in inverted commas because I don't think he was. He literally didn't get touched by a particular challenge and then stayed down on the floor. A few minutes later, he decides to walk off because he's injured. I don't get why we have players doing things like this. I mean, you saw Arsenal's Bukayo Saka limping, you know, whenever he has a bad game. Does Rashford now start doing the same? Just because he's not playing well, then uses an injury as an excuse. And this makes it difficult for Ten Hag. And that's kind of one of the topics that I want to focus on today. I'm not really concerned about a preview to this game because all in all, we should be winning Sheffield United at Old Trafford. Regardless of what team Eric Ten Hag puts out, injuries cannot be an excuse because Sheffield United are not that far off from Coventry City. Just because they're in the Premier League doesn't mean that they are better than Coventry City. Well, yeah, if you look at the table and the technicalities of it, yes, but in terms of players, in terms of how they are going to come at us, it's going to be the same. Sheffield United have nothing to lose. They're only fighting relegation. It makes it worse. So... Again, if our players lack the mentality, if Ten Hag chooses certain players to start, we're probably going to be having the same issues again. We were again counted so many times, there was again a gap in midfield and it's the same issues, game in, game out, and it doesn't seem to change. So what is the problem? Is it Ten Hag or is it the players? Is it both? Is it everything that is going on with the club right now? Jason Wilcox finally started his work and is our new technical director, but since he's come in, the Telegraph has said that Ten Hag is on trial and he will be watched by Jason Wilcox, the way he addresses himself in training, you know, how he interacts with the players, you know, what type of football he's trying to play, etc, etc. A full assessment will be done. And whether Ten Hag stays or not, you know, a lot of people will look to that Coventry City game and think to themselves that on the one hand, you accept it, you know. If he does lose his job, then there are reasons why. But on the other hand, you also think to yourself, he's not being helped. Some of the players are not giving their all and are not really being intelligent enough on the pitch 
to have a performance from minute 1 to minute 90. I mean, we didn't start that game well, but we still managed to get into a two-goal lead by halftime. We had control. And then in the second half, we score a third, and you think that the game is done. And I think that is what some of the players thought. They thought that the game is done, hence the reason why there was a lack of urgency in that second half. Up until the 70-75th minute, we were quite comfortable. But the moment we let them back in the game, we started seeing those same fragilities that we see each and every game when we are in the lead close to the game ending. And if it wasn't for VAR, we probably would not have been in the FA Cup final. A lot of people say we don't deserve to be in the FA Cup final. But we won the penalty shootout. Yes, it was an embarrassing way to win it. And I myself am embarrassed as a Man United fan to know that our players simply just gave up at the end and wouldn't have been bothered if we had to lose that game. And Ten Hag would have probably not been in a job. But it's not to say that if he wins the FA Cup, he's going to be in a job. You have to be realistic. Ineos has changed everything in the background so far and it would not be surprising if they change the manager. And Ten Hag doesn't do himself any favours. And now, knowing that he's on trial, it makes it more difficult because now the players know that there is a chance that he can be sacked. And some of these players have survived previous managers and get another chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. And if Ten Hag does get sacked, do not be surprised if the likes of Rashford, McTominay, Luke Shaw, Harry Maguire, etc. There are so many others that will still be at the club and we will find ourselves in a massive, massive issue trying to make sense of why we still have the same players that were here since Louis van Gaal, since Jose Mourinho, since Ole. And that in itself shows how badly the club has been run. Now, Ten Hag might choose to make changes in this game. He might stay this with the same players. He might choose the same starting level. We still have injuries at centre-back. So it's probably going to be Casemiro and Maguire at centre-back again. He's probably going to persist with playing Juan Bissaka left back to allow Diogo Dolo to have that right back attacking, you know, impetus that he has. He's better from the right hand side, obviously. But of course, he's a better defender on the left hand side because he's more comfortable on his left hand side than what Juan Bissaka is. But I don't think Tenag is going to change the back four from Coventry City. Now, in midfield, I don't want to see McDominay starting. I didn't want him to start the Coventry City game, regardless that he scored a goal. He's not good enough because he leaves us with 10 men when we have the ball. He doesn't want to be part of the build-up. He doesn't want to be part of the link-up play. He just wants to find some ball drop into the box or find a space in the box to either take a shot or hit the ball in. And it's a very good tactic to have, but in a game where we're going to have a team playing a very, very low block like Sheffield United, they're not going to try and press us high. They're not going to try and come at us, you know, they're going to want to counter us. So having the likes of McTominay on the field is just going to leave us with a bit of a hole because we are not going to be able to play and have more creators on the pitch. Therefore, I would rather see Maynou playing as the lone six and have Eriksen and Bruno just a bit higher to have more passing options and creative options. Now, of course, Rashford went off injured. I keep saying this because I don't think he is. But then I said that he's a possible doubt. And I think it's because he came off with an injury. So let's be fair and say Garnacho should start on the left-hand side because I think that he should. We played very, very well when he was on the pitch. And again, on the one hand, should he have been taken off? No. But you have to understand that he's been playing every single game since, what, last year, December. And that is a long time, especially for his age. You know, we should not be depending on teenagers, but that is where we are at the moment. So then not protecting him and, and, and Mainu is a very good decision to take them off. He couldn't have expected the players to capitulate, especially bringing on the likes of Anthony, bringing on Ahmad, you know. So I don't want Ahmad, Anthony starting this game. Ahmad has to come in on the right hand side because... He's done more than what Anthony and Rashford have done whenever he has come on the pitch. So he definitely must deserve to start on the right hand side. And of course, we don't have any other striker, so it has to be Hoyland up front. But regardless of what you think about this game, I don't think we're going to be seeing a style of play. It's probably going to be similar to Coventry City, where we are going to be getting chance after chance after chance. And then close to the end of the game, we'll see. Will these players keep their heads? Will they start capitulating again? And it would not be surprising if they do. 
we give so many shots away, we give so many chances away, it's difficult for us to keep clean sheets. It's difficult for the likes of Casemiro, who's not a centre-back, but can play there, has to deal with certain things that he's not used to dealing with on a regular basis. So having these type of changes in our team does affect the way Ten Hag wants to play. But in terms of personnel, we still should be beating Sheffield United. It's the same as it was with Coventry City. We are expected to win because some of our players, if not all of our players, are better than Sheffield United's players, were better than Coventry City's players. So it's going to be interesting to see how our team approaches this and how Ten Hag approaches this because no matter how you look at it, Sheffield United is going to come at us with everything that they have. And I do apologize for that little sound of the dogs. It's normal. They are howling again. Doesn't matter. It's kind of more energy that they've shown than what certain players of Man United have shown. And it's very, very difficult if you want to understand it because, and I'm doing off of Marcus Rashford's celebration here. When last did he even do it? It shows how bad he has been performing this season. And whatever excuses he wants to have and lay out on the table, whatever things needs to be done or wants to be done, it simply has to come down to him as a player. Does he want it? It has to come from himself. Ten Hag can motivate him. The fans can motivate him. His teammates can motivate him. But if he, if he himself is not motivated, then what is there for him to play for? We only have European places to play for now. The FA Cup final will have to wait. So, how we approach this game against Sheffield United needs to be better. We need to, sorry, be making a statement in terms of where we are going. You know, try and finish the season as strong as possible. But it's not possible with this team because of some of the players that we have. And yes, we might have the likes of Martinez or even Shaw returning back from injury before the end of the season. But that's not going to make us any stronger because they are not 100% fit. They do not have the rhythm that you would have wanted them to have, especially leading up to a cup final against City, where a lot of people, once again, are expecting us to lose. So, it doesn't look good, and it hasn't looked good all season, but this is where we are as a club, and we have to be realistic about it. We are not good. Some of our players are definitely not even good enough for mid table clubs. You know, I don't want to mention names, but you know who I'm talking about. So, let's see what happens against Sheffield United, and Let's just get the three points. Let's get the win. Don't expect anything flashy. Don't expect a massive performance. But whatever happens, we just have to get the win. The three points is important and also for momentum and a bit of confidence. But I thank you for joining me. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see exactly what Tenag is thinking with our game against Sheffield United. But we we'll see each other again soon, Red Devils. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. If you want more content on Manchester United, like, share and subscribe.